Hello, my name is Kangling Wang. I'm a geophysicist with Shell. The title of my lecture is Water Velocity and Tide Measurement in Marine Seismic Acquisition. In this presentation, I will show a device we developed that can be put on the seafloor to monitor water properties during seismic acquisition. Why did we do that? That will be the first part of my presentation, uh, the motivation. Then I will show how this device works. Next, I will talk about our field trials to show the good performance of this uh, device. And in the end, conclusions and acknowledgments. The goal of this effort is to improve the quality of 4D seismic data. As we know, the key success factor for 4D is to uh, repeat everything in baseline and monitor surveys to make sure the time-lapse difference observed in the data reflects reservoir changes rather than just the different acquisition parameters. Source and receiver positions used to be the main challenge. Now, with the advances in GPS, steering, and the water acoustic systems, and ocean bottom seismic, the uh, positioning repeatability has been greatly improved. So other non-repeatability factors become more important, uh, such as the stability of source signatures, or water properties here. Water properties here means the water velocity and the tidal variations in the survey and the between different surveys. Water property impact is particularly important for ocean bottom seismic because mirror migration or multiple migration is often used in this data. So seismic energy has additional repass in the water layer. Usually people use travel time analysis to estimate such uncertainties. But this process is often complicated by coupled factors including tides, water velocities, positioning errors, or time drift if you use ocean bottom nodes. These factors often generate similar time shift effects in seismic data and very hard to separate. So if we can directly mirror some of them, the uncertainties will be greatly reduced and the travel time analysis will be improved. That's what we are trying to do here. Here is an example of the water velocity variations during 4D seismic surveys. This plot shows the ROV mirrored water velocities as a function of depth during Shell's uh, DEMOS 2007 OBN survey. Different colors show different times during the survey. And we can see the water velocity variation is up to 15 meter per second or 7 milliseconds one way time. Uh, that's huge for 4D. After a lot of work on wa uh, water statics with travel time analysis, we managed to remove a large part of the errors caused by this and obtained good quality 4D data. But it's very hard to further improve the 4D statics with, uh, with, with uh, seismic data alone. We feel it's necessary to directly measure and uh, continuously monitor water properties during seismic acquisition. This is a seafloor device we developed to do such measurements. It's called PIES, or Pressure Inverted Echo Sounder. As the name implies, it includes a pressure sensor to measure water pressure at the seafloor, uh, which can be converted to water depths, so the um, tidal variations can be monitored. It also includes the inverted echo sounder, which measures, which measures the, uh, the two-way water time by sending an acoustic pulse and measuring the time it takes to be reflected back from the sea surface. With time and depth, we can calculate the um, average water velocity and monitor it over time. The, the top right plot shows the transmitted waveform by PIES, and the middle plot shows the uh, recorded waveform. And uh, we can see it's uh, strongly distorted because of the uh, undulations of sea surface. Fortunately, for the purpose of PIES, the first arrival part of the recorded waveform is relatively clean. So since the, the first arrival corresponds to the uh, shortest repass in the vertical direction, the vertical travel time can be precisely measured by cross-correlation of the transmitted waveform and the recorded waveform. Now let's look at the field trial results. The field trial shown here was carried out in the Gulf of Mexico during an ocean bottom node survey. Four PIES units were deployed at four different depths, 
uh, about 400 meter, 600 meter, 800 meter, and 1,000 meter uh, over an area of, of about uh, 20 kilometer by 10 kilometer. ROVs were used to uh, deploy and recover ocean bottom nodes during the survey, and uh, water temperature, pressure, and uh, conductivity were logged in this process. So we have independent measurement of water properties to compare with the PIES measurement. This is the PIES data. The horizontal axis shows the time during the survey, about 120 days from September to January. The the third plot, plot C through plot F, shows the uh, path measured water pressure converted to water depth here. We can clearly see the um, uh, diurnal tides in the Gulf of Mexico. As a comparison, we put in plot B the tide height data from a nearby tide station. We can see the tide height data agree with the uh, path data in, at most time. In some places where the uh, tide height data do not look realistic, PIES data looks much better. The top plot shows the uh, sea level air pressure. Uh, we removed it from the uh, 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 tides measured water pressure when we converted it to water depth. Plot G shows the uh, average water velocity calculated from the water depth and the travel time measured by PIES at four different depths. Uh, the Dots show the raw data recorded every five minutes, and the uh, white curves show the smooth data. We can see the um, water velocity variations are complicated, not following a simple uh, seasonal trend. Uh, but the ups and downs are very similar to each other, implying the uh, lateral variation of the water properties uh, was not significant in the survey area. We also uh, observed some uh, interesting features in this plot. For example, there are spikes above the normal water uh, velocities from time to time. To explain this, we uh, checked all the weather data from nearby buoy stations, and we found this feature closely correlates with the uh, sea level wind speed, as shown in the bottom plot. We can see every time the wind speed goes up above 10 meter per second, there is a spike in the uh, uh, water velocity plot. So one explanation is the uh, strong wind generates some uh, 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 disrupted layer under the sea surface, like bubbles. Uh, part of the acoustic waves are scattered or reflected before they reach the sea surface. So the travel time is reduced and the apparent velocity uh, increases. Uh, this thing could happen to seismic waves and uh, potentially impact the 4D data quality. This plot compares the average water velocity from different measurements. The C curve shows the PIES measurement. Symbols show the uh, ROV measurement. And the thin curves show the seismic inversion. The seismic inversion was done by uh, travel time analysis of the first arrivals of seismic data using the ROV measured water velocities as the initial value in the iterations. We can see the PIES measurement agrees with the other two pretty well, but definitely PIES result looks smoother and more realistic thanks to the continuous logging over the whole survey. Here is another field trial in the Gulf of Mexico with two PIES units used. The two plots in the middle show the PIES measured water depths and the bottom plot shows the PIES measured water velocity variations. Hurricane Isaac happened to move through this area during the field trial, and the PIES clearly recorded the uh, impact. The top three plots show the weather data from a nearby buoy station, and we can see during the hurricane, the wind speed surged, and the air pressure dropped by several percent. The low pressure at the center of the hurricane pulled the sea surface up, and uh, the, uh, this is clearly visible in the PIES measured water depths. Since the sea surface was very rough during the hurricane, the travel time measurement was very noisy, and the resulting water velocity plot is quite noise, noisy uh, at that time. In this plot, 
the top plot, we put all the field trials results together. The horizontal axis is the time, including the last quarter of 2011 and the whole year of 2012. The vertical axis shows the water statics derived from PIES data. The water statics here is the difference between the vertical one-way travel time measured by PIES and the prediction by a velocity model used in seismic imaging. In this display, the water velocity statics and the tidal statics are combined, but in seismic processing, they need to be applied separately because they have different offset dependence. In the middle, I put a scale to show the magnitude of water statics. We can see it can be one millisecond or more. As a comparison, our goal of 4D time shift resolution is uh, 1, 0.1 millisecond. So this plot tells us to reach that goal, we have to handle the water statics properly in seismic processing. Now let's take another look at the first field trial in the second plot. This is the example we have seen uh, in details earlier. Here is a zoom-in view of the travel time variations measured by four PIES units deployed at different locations. At the four corners, of an area about uh, 20 km by 10 km. And the depth ranges from 400 m to 1000 m. But you can see the travel time variations are very similar to each other, showing that the uh, lateral variation of water properties is not significant. And also, the variations mainly come from the uh, shallow part of the water, so the depth of pipes doesn't make a big difference. But uh, if you look carefully, there are places where the water statics uh, look slightly different from each other. To capture those small variations, we can use three to four PIES units in each survey, deployed at different locations at uh, different depths. In conclusion, we developed a, device, a seafloor device called PIES uh, for direct measurement of water velocity and tides. The good performance was demonstrated in our field trials, which uh, show good agreement with ROV measurements and the buoy station and tide station data. Uh, PIES provides us the information we need to improve our travel time analysis and uh, water statics analysis, and uh, to push the repeatability of 4D data to the next level. PIES can be deployed in different ways, by ROVs, by free fall, or it can be uh, installed permanently together with ocean bottom cables. Considering its low operational requirements and the flexibility, it should be a useful component in every marine seismic acquisition. It has been adopted as a standard for all shell time-lapse uh, service in the Gulf of Mexico. Acknowledgements. First, I would like to thank my co-authors, uh, Paul Hatchell with Shell, Karsten Judengard, Kancraft with uh, Fairfield Nodal, and uh, Sean Down with Sonodan International. We thank Shell International Exploration and Production for, for the permission to publish this result. We thank Mark Davison and the Shell UA Geophysical Operations team, Fairfield Nodal field crew, Kim Sorth, and the Sonodan field engineers for collecting the data. And we thank Jorge Lopez for helpful discussions. And thank you for your attention.